Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More, it's Leo speaking. Today we are going to explain how different looping record modes work and I'm going to go through also the automation inside Space Fields, which is what you really need to create movement for your effects. Okay, let's go straight into it. Okay, so we are inside the AUM and we have uh, an audio channel and we have a grand piano as a, an audio unit and as you can see we have a uh, space fields there as an insert effect so let's open it up so i have set it to have our init preset which we created uh, uh, from previous tutorial and now before we go into the automation let's go through also some additional loop recording modes um, let me set uh, the output level down to zero um, for now and also let's increase the width to maximum. As you recall, we already seen the direct uh, mode and also the auto mode. In the auto mode, um, the recording of the loop starts when um, you, the, sound, the input sound goes over a threshold which is established here as we have seen, and of course the recording stops when that uh, um, audio input sound is below that threshold. And um, if um, um, you are recording for a longer time or longer than the length here, then it will overwrite, and you, you will see the overwrite um, as we've seen in previous tutorial going in red here in terms of the measurement of all the bits which are recorded. At the top here on the left hand side you see a button which is called ready and you can see that is already activated and is also active is always active when you are in auto mode. The signal mode is very similar to um, the auto recording mode but the main difference is that it waits for you to uh, click on the ready button up here to record so let's try. Let's set these to uh, record for four um, bits, like so. Oops, if we can manage it. Okay, and now we are in signal mode. If you press a key, as you can see, you have input signal coming through, but the recording doesn't start. So it works differently than the auto mode. And that's because it's waiting for you to click on the ready button. So click on the ready button. It's not starting, again, because I have not played um, a sound. And therefore, that sound input sound is not going over the threshold. So let's click on it. As you can see, it started recording and also did a bit of overwriting. And of course, it stopped when that uh, uh, input sound has gone below the threshold. Okay. Another way to make it stop is to click on the ready button. So let's try. Oops. There you go. And we click on the ready button again to deactivate it and it will stop of course the recording so very similar to the auto mode but um, you have to click on the ready button to ensure it's almost like to activate it to enable it and you can also stop the recording clicking on the ready button now there are other modes there is a ready mode as well as you can see if i click on the note it doesn't start if i click on the ready button it doesn't start again but if now I press on a note on the keyboard, it starts recordings, right? But it stopped this time when it reached the length, okay? which in this case is four bits. So that's the main difference, again, from the signal um, loop recording mode. There is an additional mode, which is a fixed uh, mode. So if you click again on the note, it will not start the recording. So you have to click on the ready button, but as soon as you click on the ready button, the recording will start on the next bit. So click and you will see it will start to record. Now, it will stop in this mode when it reaches the length, which is established here on uh, the length dial. So this mode is useful if you want to fix the amount of recording, of course, that you are doing. There is also a manual mode, and as you, the name says, it's very simple again it doesn't record if you don't enable it here with the ready button and uh, of course as you enable it it will start on the next bit similar to the fixed mode um, and it will rewrite however if it reaches the maximum length established here up here on the um, for the loop while in the fixed mode it will not overwrite what is being recorded and it never stops here 
even if uh, the sound goes below the threshold, it's still running. And the idea is that it is manual, so you need to click on the ready button to manually uh, stop the loop recording. Okay, hopefully uh, that makes sense. As you can see, after the manual mode, we go back in direct mode and then auto, etc., etc. So, um, for the purposes of the tutorial in explaining how automation works, we're going to use the auto mode. Okay, so let's clear the buffer now so we don't have anything in there. And um, let's re enable the output and uh, increase the level on the first output. Yeah, there is nothing there. Okay, perfect. So now let's record a um, bit of the piano sound and I will record it for around three bits and then I will stop. There you go. It did a little bit of overwriting, so let's listen. As you know from previous tutorial, you can increase the number of steps. Why don't we do that? Something like that. And let's increase also the number of pulses being played. Okay, let's uh, give a, a bit of fading on uh, uh, the steps, something like that, and also a little bit more crossover as well. Sorry, not transition, but um, crossover like that. So let's listen. Okay, let's make it nice. Let's add some reverb. Perhaps a bit of chorus as well. So we have um, more volume. Okay, now let's start the explanation on automation. It is really when you start using automation that you start to create movement in terms of effects. So as you can see up here for each of the three outputs, you have a, um, a text which says auto. So click on it and you change um, the what has been displayed for that particular output. And you can do the same, of course, for all the other outputs as we've seen in one of the earlier tutorial. Now, let's focus only on the first output. You have two uh, destination for automation or modulation per output. As you can see, the first two controls here are duplicated down here. So you have def and rate and then def and rate. And at the bottom, you have the two destination. So the def and rate dials up here control the destination, which uh, is the first one here, which says P for pulse counter. And then the bottom two controls, of course, at the def and rate for the destination here, which says alpha, alpha, and frequency. So, as I just mentioned, and these are the two destinations. As you can see, it says P for pulse counter, as I just mentioned. And it is a, um, a special mode which will increase the counter based on number of steps that you have defined. And when that total reaches the rate which you have set, then it will switch the, um, the modulation and the automation um, around. And it switches between minimal and maximum um, values. And I will show that in a moment. While the L stands for LFO, which means it will act as a sound wave LFO. And I will show you that straight away. Um, what you can change is if I if I click if I keep clicking on it and I go back to where it says L for LFO level, you can automate the changes on the level, on the pitch, on the pulse, on the feedback, and on the frequency. And then if you keep going, it will go through over the same again buffer pulse counter. Okay, so let's start with um, something simple like the pitch. Now you can you need to establish the amount of depth, like so. And that will be positive and negative from the, um, where the position is. And as you can see, the automation is already working because uh, uh, the pitch is set right here at the top, is doing changes between left and right for the amount that we have established on the depth. Okay. You can also set it to have some randomization, like so. Okay. And in that case, 
where you can see that it's different every time that uh, uh, the dial passes through the um, zero um, point. In the pulse counter, instead, it will change based on when pulses are changed. Okay. Now, in order to change that, because it's moving too fast, you want to act on the rate. You can do that from rate from one to nine, or if you want something slower, you click on it and you use the time stand. And in that case, you can go by tens like so. And But you can still refine it, of course, going on the outer dial and do further refinement there. So let's listen. <laughs> Of course, you can change the starting point here if you want, for example, not to have a reverse pitch. So I suggest you do that like so. Okay. And why not? Let's remove also the randomization. Oops. Uh, you can invert also the phase of the death as well, by the way. So let's leave it like so. Like so. And then let's change the round, uh, the round uh, randomization down to zero. Okay. And let's listen. <laughs> Of course, you can start to hear that there is movement in terms of effect. The magic, of course, um, gets even better when you change the pitch. For example, if you make the pitch lower and longer and you use some depth modulation and you amplify early or later reflection. So let's listen. <laughs> Of course, you may want to use more than one modulation. In this case, let's use the lower one. It's set already for LFO frequency. Why don't we use that? Let's increase the depth again. And then, uh, why not? Let's set the rate to something like 20 or 30, something like that. Um, doesn't have to be precise. Okay, and uh, let's listen. You can see it's moving up here. Why don't we also make it a band pass and increase the value right there. Okay, let's listen. Of course, that is only one output, so you can imagine what happens when you have more than one output working together. Now, the mode we have seen so far is based on LFO automation, but of course you can use pulse counter. So why don't we try the same, but pulse counter for pitch. So as I mentioned at the beginning, it still applies depth and randomization. The randomization will be based on random amplitude over a square a wave of course, but in this case, it will switch between minimum and maximum value when it reaches the maximum rate, which is established here. So let's uh, decrease that to something like uh, maybe 10, like so. Let's go back to the previous screen. You can see here it's moving um, from min and maximum value, depending, of course, from the value which was set plus the depth. Let's listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
let's play some additional notes. And of course, why don't we try to add another output to make it more interesting now? Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now you know how to use automation. Uh, one other thing I have mentioned as well is that uh, in when you are using pulse counters here, um, of course, in the uh, pulse counter is incremented when steps are changed, so that is very much depending on the number of steps, or if the steps are number are equal to one, then it will swap min and max at the end of the length of the loop which has been played. Okay, I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next tutorial. Thank you, bye.